Well, what what Alex has done that's very interesting to me is he teamed up with Glover. And when he teamed up with Glover, I mean, it's an w- interesting camp. Like, who's going to Connecticut to fight for world titles, right? Yeah. Glover. And Glover's resurgence all coincides with him training with Alex. Really? When Alex came and started training with him, that's when Glover really made, like, his last run and got to the title and beat Jan. That's, Why do you think that's that is? all connected. Because I think iron sharpens iron. I think he needed a fucking assassin in camp with him, like a young assassin like Pereira. But do you think they, like, spar, like, heavy, like, beat the shit out of each other? Spar? Probably not, right? Probably not. Probably, probably drill not. a little not bit at more. at 42, probably not. Strickland does, though. Nah, that, that motherfucker, motherfucker, like, travels just to spar. Apparently, that's all he wants to do is just spar all day hard. He spars hard all day. Spars with everybody. I believe it. You know, I mean, that's Bobby Green said it. Bobby Green's like trained with him and, and seen like what he does. He's like that motherfucker goes hard with everybody. He just yeah. goes hard. I seen uh, Eric Nixick post a picture of him sparring with Ningano. He's like, dude, he's the only motherfucker in the gym who seeks that guy out. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I sparred with that dude uh, one time. And I was like, listen, dude, you're a fucking big motherfucker. I'm not a big motherfucker, so you know. He's like, ho ho, you won't die, but <laughs> <laughs> I can't get now getting hurt. That's another thing. I was like, ha ha, you won't die. Yeah, I was like, ah, but maybe. And dude, meanwhile, he's saying this. He's fucking got someone else's blood all over his uh, rash guard and shit. Oh, so no. I was like, dude. So when the round started, I tried to grab him. And of course, you know, he sprawled, and I spent the whole time in half guard with him beating my body up. And uh, he's like, oh, you thought that'd be easy, huh? I was like, no, dude, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I thought it was just the lesser of two evils. You know? Thought Either that you would be easy. doing that or you thumping me in my head. So, I, you know. Well, Strickland was brought in to help uh, Johnny Elbin, who just beat Gegard Mousasi mm-hmm. for the Bellator Middleweight Championship. So, uh, if you wa- did you watch that fight? I haven't. Gegard- I saw the clips that he was fucking putting that work in. <sighs> I was very impressed. Very impressed. Because Gagar is nice, man. Very nice. He is one of the best middleweights on earth. And Johnny won every fucking round. Every it was hurting fucking him too. round. Hurt him, dropped him early in the first round, had him really badly hurt, took him down, dominated him on the ground. I mean, won every fucking round. And there's a fight where he was like a big underdog coming into that fight. For Those good are reason. The fights I like to bet on though. Yeah. Like them play. If I see plus nine hundred, I'm throwing something at it. Every rep. Yeah, well, that in that one, a lot of people were, like, really high on Elbin going into that fight, and that's one of the reasons why I was so interested in it. Like, a lot of those ATT guys were very high on him. And this is after, you know, Gegard had destroyed Austin Vanderfold. Uh, he, he fucked him up quick. And so a lot of people, and then Gegard was saying after the fight, like, I am the best middleweight on earth. And he's the guy that I was always like, damn, I wish... I wish he hadn't gone over to Bellator because, like, he had beat Chris Weidman, and I was. And I, How many fights does he have? Gayard? That dude's like forty-seven and something ten crazy. or something. Like, yeah. God damn, dude.